so my story takes place in 1996, which is 20 years ago, which is crazy. In 1995, I purchased a round the world ticket, which is still available. You just go around the world. You just gotta go in one direction. That's the only thing. So one of my stop offs on the way home, I'm getting near the end of my trip. I'd gone to Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and then Hawaii, and then home. So at, this story takes place in Fiji. The biggest city in Fiji is Suva. And I had arrived unknowingly at the beginning of the Hibiscus Festival. So I, once I get settled in at the hostel, I go and walk the grounds of the festival, just figuring out where I am. And I'd done a little bit of research. Fiji is half Hindi Indians and half Baptist Fijians. That's it. <laughs> Okay, we had gone there with mission, missionaries and they're very hardcore Baptists to the point where they travel the world and compete in choirs. The Gians always win Baptist choir competitions. Fun fact. So anyway, I'm walking around this uh, festival and the Heavy Swiss Festival is going on. That means a lot of weird snacks and a lot of random games and funky people in the ocean and, and it's, it's beautiful. and. But there's not a lot of performance. I don't see a lot of singing or dancing or anything, which is a little strange. But anyway, it goes on throughout the day, and a couple times, a couple Indian women asked me if I can set them up with American husbands, and that I pointed out helpfully that I didn't have one myself, so I wasn't really a good resource for that. But anyway, so the day goes on, and then it comes in tonight. Okay, so there's a stage set up with these huge, immense speakers, 20, 30 feet high, and these big giant grandstands. Grandstands fill up with people like myself and we're squished in, there's no personal space, we're squishing in and there's some performances by kids, like little kids, you know, doing little cutie things. And then um, somebody gets up on stage and says, actually this was a free event, but now it's a dollar. So if everyone could get up and line up and give that guy in the red shirt a dollar, go do that. And everybody does. They get up and they like, and that's when I realized there's another American on the other side. And we look at each other like, I'm not doing that. That's, that's stupid. And so we wait, and then everyone comes back. Okay. So then they finish the program and, and all that, and then everybody leaves. And I think, okay, well, I guess that's it. I thought there would be a band or something. So then we leave, and I'm walking around the grounds, and they put on some awesome music. Shoop, salt and pepper, right? Shoot, shoot, here I go, here I go. Here. Okay, so naturally, I start shooting, as one does. And I just, in my own little private world, I'm by myself, right, so I'm just shooting. And I hear these squeals of joy. And I turn my head to see a sight I will never forget as long as I live. Probably 20, 25 young kids, maybe five to 12, Fijian boys and girls all come rushing at me, I mean rushing at me to the point where I almost turned around and ran, and they circled around me very tightly, and you know, dance, dance, and I'm like, shoop, shoop, here we go, here we go. So I'm dancing, and it's fun, and they're dancing too, and it's great, and then it starts to get a little tight, it starts to get a little weird. So I, I stop, I'm like, okay, that was really fun, and go on your way, and trying to dissipate the crowd, and I walk a little bit further, and I, I just do one hip thing, and they all come back to me. Only now there's like 40 or 50 of them. And not only are they dancing with me, but they're starting to push me. They're starting to physically move me. So they're starting to physically move me, I start to realize, towards the stage, towards the stage. So they're pushing me towards the stage, and there's a little stairway, and they start pushing me up the stairway, there's a guy in charge of the Hibiscus Festival who's having none of it. None of it. And he's pushing me down the stairs. And they are pushing me up the stairs. Down, up. This went on for a bizarrely a long time. Enough for me to realize that I was, I had no free will at this point. I was sort of a symbol, sort of a, of something that I didn't quite understand. Finally, he relents and they let me up on stage. Then they put on a whole new set of music. I mean, it was good though, it was good. It was Michael Jackson, it was Shaka Khan, it was, you know, the good stuff, right? Marvin Gaye, all that stuff, thank God.
So I just danced like my freaking life depended on it, because it may have, I'm not sure. So I was just like tapity tap 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 tap, and it was like a, a Looney Tunes cartoon. And I start dancing, and this goes on for three or four songs. I'm getting tired, I'm getting a little panicked, because now, by now I realize I look out there, there's a sea of people, and the grandstands have filled up again. Everyone's come back. And I look at the American dude, and he was like, what the hell are you doing there? I'm like, I don't know. And so then I'm dancing, 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 and then I think, oh my god, I have to have an exit strategy. And so I, the kids' hands are up, because I'm a rock star now. Because their hands are up, and so I start grabbing their hands, and I start pulling them, start pulling them, start pulling them up on stage. And gradually the stage fills up with them, and other people jump on stage, and then the whole stage is filled. I'm like, oh, thank God. And so then I can make my exit down the stairs, back down the stairs. And I turn around, and I see this immense, throbbing cultural event that I evidently had a hand in creating, accidentally, I don't know trying to figure it out and, and there's a man over to the left and he's he's an older gentleman and I'd like to say he was and he's probably 90 and I'd love to say he's hanging out with his daughters but I don't think they were his daughters <laughs> they each had an arm they were holding him and he said madame 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 come come and so I went over to this man and he said I just want to thank you for your dancing I'm like okay good can you explain what <laughs> what I, I can't be the first person to have danced on this island, that's crazy. And he, he, so he explained to me about the history of the missionaries and how they were, have become very, very shy people. And it was their, their expression had kind of pulled back. And they, to this day, they don't really dance or express themselves unless someone else does it first. So everybody's waiting for someone else to do it first. And I guess I had been that person unwittingly. And he, thank you, thank you. And, and it was just a lovely experience. So. The next morning, I go into the American Express office because back in olden times, kids, before the internet, um, <laughs> I would get my mail by going to American Express offices all over the world. That's how I got my mail, okay? No email yet, right? And that's also how I got my money. That was my account. So I went in there worried because I thought, I gotta be at the end pretty soon of my money. So I go in and I sit down with this beautiful Fijian woman with the giant afro because they all about the afro there it's beautiful and this woman sits me down and she tells me I'm sorry but you have no more funds you are out of money you are out you have no more funds so I'm in a foreign country I have no money she said but I want you to know that I really enjoyed your dancing last night <laughs> thank you